Off studio. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a little while since I have actually done anything on this channel, but I wanted to come back today and start a playthrough of a game that I would say is definitely on my top 10 list of my favorite audio games. This playthrough is going to be by far the longest playthrough we've done. It's going to be split up into several parts because this game is very long. This game is called Bakurano de Balkan 3, I think is how you pronounce the name, or I like to call it BK3 for short. This is a Japanese game made by uh, Nianshin is the what he goes by. Um, his real name, I believe, is Yukio. And he has made several different games, including the BK series, BK 1, 2, and 3. BK 3 is the one I'm starting with because it is the probably the easiest to demonstrate because BK2 really tries my patience to be honest um, there is you have to have a ridiculous amount of health in order to survive anything and in that game you have to buy health and this game in this BK3 game you can actually it has a leveling system and you can upgrade your health which we'll talk about when when we get there and BK1 I have never actually tried I need to try it but I need the I believe I need the JGT add-on uh, the Japanese game translator add-on for NVDA in order to play it BK2 the story itself is not translated but the game is so the all the game options and stuff like that they are translated so the actual in-game text is but not the not the story BK3 the whole thing is translated and there is a translation dictionary which you can purchase for five dollars which you just put in the game folder and that will translate the game to English for you the way you used to have to play it is through the Japanese games translator and that was hard because there are things later there's flight missions where the the actual flight mission is in Japanese or was in Japanese so you had to really know what you were doing I was able to get past those which I'll talk about later when we get to them but it's not going to be for a little while start uh, virtual camera stop recording checkbox check so let me talk about this game. BK3 is, as I said, the last, it's the last game in the BK series, at least for now, unless he comes out with another one. It's the last game in this, in the BK series. And the basic idea is it is, it is a side scroller. Um, However, there's, there's, it's a little more involved than a lot of other side-scrollers in that there is a little bit of platforming involved. Um, there are things you have to, ladders you have to climb and things like that. Um, gaps you have to jump, stuff like that. So it's kind of um, a little more involved. And this part, I think, is just going to be the tutorial because I don't want these parts to be very long because I know people that don't like to listen to long YouTube videos, so I'm going to try and make this part shorter, and then I'll probably do stage one on the next part. So my goal is to have each part be a, a, a separate stage. So in the end, there should be probably a 25 or 26 parts altogether depending on how things go and if I decide to come back and do some extra content because there is extra content in this game which I may demonstrate 
So let me go into the games folder. Now, I have this game put in my... This PC... Devices and drives grouping expanded. Windows... I have it put in my Windows folder. Now... Windows, C. Niantian game, 13... Or, not in my Windows folder, but in my root of my hard drive, uh, C colon backslash. Now, there is a folder called Niantian game, but... Items view, date mark, LCC, laser breakout 2, screaming strike. This is actually not the folder we want because LC Sigilla I grave ring like a troy ring I grave dagger I grave I grave one of three. As you hear, this is a bunch of Japanese text. This is actually BK1. Um, but I came under here to show you what what other games there are. So we have BK1. Laser Breakout two of three. Laser Breakout is a game which I may demonstrate later. Screaming Strike two. And then Screaming Strike is another game by him. So let's get out of here. Items view. Now, if I hit my up arrow, LC Sigilla I grave a ring ligatoro. We a double dagger via a ring ligatoro. We a tilde I grave a circumflex tool at CT twelve of thirty one. This is the one we want. This is the BK three game. So if we come Items under view. this folder, data two, BK three chaos one hundred twenty eight CB twenty four one of thirteen. This is the chaos edition of BK three, which I'm not going to really go into too much detail about, other than to say that there are some differences between the Chaos version and the main version of this game. The Chaos version was not actually developed by the same person. Um, well, it's more or less the same game. I mean, the story is pretty much exactly the same, but there's been some modifications made, like some modifications to various weapons, how they behave, um, the some lay some uh, stage maps are different and the enemies hit harder you walk faster stuff like that data 2 of 13 this is a data folder this is where you put your translation dictionary and stuff like that dick 3 of 13 actually data no. 2 items a calculator dot dll2 of dollar p dot dll3 of 21 sound dot hpi for all right sorry the data folder just has a bunch of items view dll files dick 3 of 13 the dict file or the dict folder is your translation dictionary. That's where you want to put output for of thirteen. Output. Um, I'm not sure what this is. Items view lit selected. Date all per and one of one. Yeah, I don't know what that is I for. BK three chaos one hundred twenty eight CB twenty four dot eggs chaos play dot six of dict ADT dot dat seven of thirteen. So for the chaos chaos dict ADT edition. history dot txt eight of thir history and dot txt nine of thirteen. History and history ENG are the changelog, one's in Japanese and one's in English, so you can come under here and view the changelog. Play.txt 10 of 13. And play.exe. Readme.txt 11 of 13. Readme, which you cannot read unless you translate it to English, because this is actually in Japanese. Up.txt 12 of 13. This, I believe, is... Let me hit a two up on this. U P dot E X E blank up dot text. I think this is the up uh, the uh, updater dot exe file. Although the game updates, the game auto updates when you actually start the game. So I think this is just another way to update. Updater dot x thirteen of thirteen. Um, up dot text twelve. Of well, there's up dot exe and updater dot exe. I'm not sure what the difference is. Me dot play dot Let's go to play dot exe. So I'm going to hit enter, and we will get a logo here. Loading. Lucky Rando J. Bunk and I. I. So that's the logo you hear for all Niantian games, basically. And this is another logo. I think this is specific to BK3. Our great adventure, I, 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 the lone wolf, title menu, load game, loads of previously saved game. Yeah, so this is what the, this is the, that's the English title of the game, the, Our Great Adventure 3, the lone wolf. And you can hear music in the background. I must say, this game has really good music. Um, I don't keep the music turned up very loud because 
I find that it's distracting and with my slight hearing loss um, I don't do well with music up very loud so I'm going to show you the main menu our first option is load game um, you if you hit enter on this you can choose from slots to load your game I believe you have select just let me see. Six, seven, eight, yeah you have 10 slots to choose from nine no data ten no data nine eight no data and it tells you seven no data six no data five no data four Brian three Brian two Brian one Brian so it tells you if there is actually a game in that slot or not um, new game creates a new data file and starts the game yeah so that's self-explanatory check for updates checks for a new version of the game online okay you can do that preferences change various options for the game we'll come back to this exit exit the game and exit so let's go up to preferences, preferences. change various options for the game and show you what's under here preferences BGM volume current value 100 atmosphere sound vo BGM volume atmosphere so volume. if I hit enter on BGM volume press up and down arrows to adjust the BGM volume to check the current value press left right or the space bar 100 100 180 900 1001 so I'm hitting the up arrow and as you can hear the music's getting louder the maximum 3000 3000 3000 2009 maximum is 3000 and the minimum you just hold down the down arrow zero is zero I'll leave it 20 180 120 Let's see. I'll leave it 100 uh, I'll leave it right there um, this Sli um, these sliders are kind of weird because it goes from zero to like three thousand, which is a little bit a little bit interesting. But um, let's hit escape. Eighty, eighty, uh, zero, forty, one hundred. Oh, I think I need to hit preferences. BG atmosphere sound volume current value two thousand. This is just uh, atmosphere sound, so this is like background ambience, stuff like that, that you'll hear. Speech output, current method, NVDA slash JAWS. Okay, so... Select a speech output method dot, clipboard, NVDA slash PC talker, JAWS. clipboard, send strings to the clipboard. Readable by most of screen readers, but it may be laggy. So clipboard, this copies text to your clipboard. Um, I guess this can be useful if you want to... Piece clipboard sends strings to the clipboard. Readable by most of screen readers, but it may be laggy. Just uh, send strings to your clipboard. Although I'd imagine this would take forever to to play because you'd have to read every single thing that was output to your clipboard. PC talker slash VDMW best performance for PC talker slash VDMW users. PC talker, I believe, is a Japanese screen reader. Auto detect automatically detects the best method. Um, auto detect. So I think this detects if you have a screen reader on. NVDA slash draws sends strings directly to draws slash NVDA. Okay, that's what we have it set to. Sappy 5 sends strings directly to Sappy 5. You can do Sappy 5, and that's it. NVDA slash was sends strings directly to select a speech. Atmosphere sound volume. Speech output. Check for updates on startup. Current setting on. Check for updates on startup. Control type for moving. Current setting. Arrow keys to run slash hold down. Control to walk. Okay, now. Select preferred control type for movement. Arrow keys to walk slash hold down. Control to run. Arrow keys to run slash hold down. Control to walk. I like this method. Um, I usually leave this set to arrow, arrow keys to run slash hold down control to walk arrow keys to run hold down control to walk so if I hit my left and right arrow keys in the game it makes me run if I hold down the control key with my arrow keys it makes me walk um, I like I like this method the arrow, uh just holding down the arrow keys to run although you need to, you do need to be careful sometimes you don't always want to run really fast in the game so sometimes you do want to walk arrow, arrow. so if people arrow like keys to walk slash hold down control to run that method you can arrow use keys that as well preferences atmosphere speed check control type from output combat logs current setting off output combat logs i think this outputs logs to your games folder um every time you start a level and uh complete a level because there are combat logs saved 
or there will be if you turn this option on. I don't have this on, so... Page up slash page down scroll. How many items do you want to scroll when pressing page up and page down? 20. 21. Oh, I didn't know, I didn't know about this. 22. 20. 20. 19. 18. 17. 16. 15. 4. 3. 12. 11. 10. 11. 12. 13. 14. 15. 16. 18. 20. Left. Blank. So, I think what this does is, uh, I, f I forgot about this. What this does in this, uh, page up and page down will scroll between, um, will scroll items. So, for example, in shops, um, rather than hitting the arrow keys, because the arrow keys only go one item at a time, so if it asks how many of this item you want to buy, the arrow keys, it, the up and down arrow keys are only going to increase the quantity by one, but if you hit page up and down, um, it'll increase that quantity by more. You can also manually type it in in certain cases. Preferences, at speed check, control, output, combat law, page up slash, language select. Language select, um... Save settings. That's, I don't think we need to go through that. And save settings, so... Settings save, a great adventure, new game, creates a new data file and starts the game. Alright, so let's, uh, get started now. Welcome to our great adventure, I, I, I. Okay, so that popped up automatically. Now to scroll through this text, you use the enter key. This game is the sequel of our great adventure too. First, please choose a save slot to use. Once selected, your data will be automatically saved to the specified slot. Please choose a save slot. Two. One. Okay. Two, three, four, five. So let's save it in slot five because I think I already Six, have... Six, five. Yeah, I have games in the first four slots. Next, please decide your player name. In the next screen, an input box will be shown. Input your player name there, then press the tab key. Okay. Um... Bucky Rando, Dave Alcon, I, I, I. Edit blank. This input method is a little bit strange. I don't know why he has you input your player name and then hit the tab key, rather than just typing in your player name and hitting enter. Um, it's a little weird, but I'm just gonna call myself. Your player name is Bryant. Is that okay? Bucky Rando Dave Alcott, no. Yes. Yes, it is. Your data, okay, has data has been created. Game setup has been completed. Now the game begins. Okay. This is the sequel of the Argrade Adventure series. Do you want to recap the previous story? If you this is the sequel of the Argrade Adventure series. Oops. Do you want to recap the previous story? If you haven't played the previous games, it will help you understand the game world. What would you like to do? I know that. Let me play. Please recap. Um. I know that. Let me play. I'm just to save time. I'm gonna. Please. I know that. Let me play. Hit. Um. I'm gonna say just. Uh. Let me play because. If you guys want to go through this on your own, you can, um, the recap, but, um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna... Please, I know that. Let me play. Just hit let me play. Um, one thing I did forget to mention, that this game has, I believe, 16 difficulties, so when whenever you start the game, you start out at the default difficulty, which is the easiest difficulty and the only way you can play other difficulties is by completing the first one and you can only play certain difficulties when you're at a certain level um, otherwise they'll be locked please I know that let me play so I'm gonna hit enter on this data Bryant total playing time zero hours one minutes 26 seconds stage select moves to the stage selection menu status displays player status all right, so this is a an opportunity for me to show you what's in this menu. Stage select moves to the stage selection menu. So we have stage select. Uh, this will select the stage and the level. This game has 25 stages and four levels in each, with the exception of stage 25, which has, um, I believe, five levels. Status displays player status. Status items list current items. items. Tactical items list current tactical, tactical items. items. Items and tactical items aren't going to have anything in them right now. Collection items. List current collection items. Collection items isn't either. Weapons. List current weapons. Weapons. Shields. List current shields. These are... These menus are going to be empty. Manage data. Manage the save data. Preferences. Changes various settings. Exit. Save... Okay, preferences we've already explored. Prefer manage data. Manage the save data. Data management. Online backup. Opens the online backup menu. You can back up these, this data online. I'm not sure exactly how this process works because save slot I don't. Five. Press enter to change. I don't use that. Uh, you can change the save slot in player here. Player name. Bryant. Press you enter change to change. Your player name. Back. 
And data box status stage select moves to the stage selection menu. So let's status go to displays status. Status HP 100 slash 100 100.00% remaining. All status HP stamina 100 slash 100 100.00% remaining. Shield not equipped. Level one experience zero zero required for the next level. Assignable points zero. Attack zero. Defense zero. Tech zero. Stamina 100. Location zero zero. Playing mode normal. Press enter or escape to close. Okay, so as you can hear, your character has various stats. So HP, stamina, tech, defense, and attack. And I'll explain what those are a, Play, little, press bit, a little bit later. Play, press enter, or escape to close. Data Bryant, status, stage select, moves to the stage items, list current items. Tactical items, list current collection, rep, cheat, manage, preference, exit. Preferences, manage data. Yeah, and you can use shield. Shield, rep, collect, tack, item, status, stage select, moves so to the stage. So let's go to stage select. Select a stage, tutorial, bucket. Now this is the only stage available to us, so you do have to do this tutorial every time you um, start a new game. So let's hit enter. And this is- Welcome to Bakker Rando Debug and III. Before you begin your adventure, let's familiarize ourselves with basic game operation. Even if you've played the previous game, Bakker Rando Debug and II, a refresher is recommended as some controls have changed since then. There is nothing difficult here. Simply follow my instructions and you'll have no problem remembering the controls right away. The tutorial will now begin. Good luck. Select a level, zero 01, let's take a walk. Okay, so we have the level selection screen here, and the only one available to us is 0 1. Let's take a walk, so let's do that. Welcome to the tutorial. In this stage, let's learn actions that will be required to play this game. First, we will start with the basics of the game. Hold down your left and right arrow keys to move. While you are holding each of the keys, you can run to the corresponding direction. Okay, let's try. Move right. Okay, so. That sound is the, um, since I haven't moved yet, that sound is me turning. So with, if I hit the right arrow, I turn right. If I hit the left arrow, I turn left. So let's turn right and start walking or running. By default, holding down arrow keys makes you run. Pressing arrows with your control key held will make you walk slowly. In Dr. Rando Debug and II, you were able to run using the control key. If you are used to the previous style, you can change it from the settings menu. Yep, as I explained earlier. Walking slowly will make your stamina recover faster. By the way, there is a wall in front of you. This game is a 2D side scroller, so you can jump over the wall if it isn't very tall. Also, you can walk on the wall tile. Imagine that blocks are heaped in the game field, and you can walk on them. You can press up arrow to jump. Jumping rises you four squares higher. Jump over the walls and go further. Okay, so... Um... This is a good opportunity for me to talk about some other keys that are not um, explained in the tutorial. So, sub menu status. If I hit tab, we get into a menu. Um, I'll call this the pause menu because it kind of is. Items, tactical collection, weapons, lit, carried weapons, locate object, equip power check, view combat lock, exit stage, view com equip power check armor, view exit stage preferences, close menu. Pref exit view combat lock equip power check armor locate object carry weapon collect attack items status so the first option we have is status um we visited this earlier status hp 100 slash 100 stamina 100 slash 100 yeah, 100 points escape sub items then we have items you don't have any items we don't have you don't have it sub menu items tactical item you don't have any tactical sub menu item tactical collection item you don't have any sub menu item tactical collection weapons list you don't have any weapons sub menu item tactical collect weapons list carried weapons select a slot to change slot one slot two now, carried weapons, um, you can, when you have more than one weapon, you can change which weapon goes in the left hand and which goes in the right hand. So if, so that's a way to switch between weapons quickly. Um, so you can press one to switch to the other weapon and two to switch to another weapon. So if you have two weapons you want to use, um, kind of as your main Weapons. That's a quick way to switch to switch between them. Back. Sub items. Tack collection. Weapons. Carried weapons. Locate objects. Objects info. Clean river at seventy zero. Now this is another way to get to the object menu, but you can also press D within the game to to access this screen as well. Cadet ninety one. So. Clean river at seventy. We have a list of objects. I'm just one hundred zero. Not set one hundred zero. Not set one hundred two zero. Not set one hundred two zero. So one hundred two is the. Um, X position and not set 
zero is the Y position. Nutset one hundred three zero. Nutset one hundred three zero. Nutset one hundred. Nutset one. Nutset. Okay. Some items. Tactic collection. Weapons list. Carried weapons. Locate objects. Equip or check armor. We don't have any armor or shields. Submit item. Tactic collect weapons. Carried. Locate. Equip or view combat log. Exit stage. Now combat log you can also get to by pressing E within the game and shields you can get to by pressing S or armor. Um, and weapons is the weapon screen is W. View, equip, look, cap, rep, collect tactical item status. Status HP all status. Now let's go to all status here. Sub menu items status. Item tactical item collection item weapons let carry locate quick bar, view comp exits to preferences close menu. Oh, we've already visited that. Okay, Pref exit let's, uh, let's exit this. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I hit select uh, stage. exit stage by select. Welcome to the tutorial. Let's just go back in here now. Control A will skip. Um, skip text or A will. I mean. So I'm walking again. By default, holding down arrow in your random. Yeah. So we have a wall here. As you hear, we ran into it. So it told us to press the up arrow and hold down the right arrow. So I'm going to do that. I just jumped over that. You can also press the right arrow rapidly to um, jump a certain number of squares. If you step on a gap in between tiles, you will fall until you hit the ground below. Yep. So that was us uh, falling slightly. Um, C will, or uh, how do I check my position? 52, 34. Oh, Q will check, Q will check my position. So I'm at 52, 34. Again, 52 is X, 34. 52, 34. Is Y. If you are running and a gap is approaching, you can hear your footsteps echo. The echo can be heard when a gap is less than eight squares in front of you. Keep running and find out how the echoes work. Oh, by the way, there is a river below you. Try. Oops. So it basically told us to uh, try falling into the river. So this is important. So as you hear, There is a river below us now. You may you may be able to hear. Submenu. You might have been able to hear as we were walking um, our steps echoing. So that tells us we're getting close to a drop off or a uh, ledge. Um, as you walk closer to it, your the echo um, starts to be more centered, telling you that you're getting closer to falling off. So we're walking through the river here. Now there's a cat that you can, can't do anything with. Submit. Now this tutorial I will say also has some hidden um, hidden things which we can't access right now. I believe there are one or two hidden weapons somewhere in the tutorial that you can get. But I don't think we can do that right now. If an object is located above or below, the volume of the object is lowered. That's why the sound of the river gradually increased. Mm -hmm. You might have noticed that as well. That way, you can imagine how the objects are positioned and how you are moving. These are just basics of the game. You can now proceed to the next tutorial. By the way, I like the cat sitting near the river. Isn't it cute? Select a stage. Tutorial. Okay. Select a left zero 02. Let's play ball. So now we can move to zero 02. Though you may be used to this in the previous journey, I would like to teach you how to use the Enter key. The Enter key is used to open doors, pick up items, or use equipment in the game field. First, try opening the door that is located to the right. You can hear the sound of the door. Alternatively, you can check where objects are by pressing the D key. This brings up a list of all objects in the current game field. To check where you are, press the Q key. Okay. Let's, oh, um, couple more things. H 100 slash 100. We'll check your health. Y 100 slash 100. Stamina. So there's a door. Let's open it. You are in a shopping mall. Let's play with walls here. Don't worry about the other visitors. This is a game. But please use the elevator before starting. Approach it and press enter to activate it. Okay. So we're just walking towards the elevator. We're running. 
So there's the elevator. I'm going to keep walking here just to see if there's anything else. Nope. Okay, so let's turn around and... So let's hit enter. Welcome to the second floor. I'll roll a ball from the right side. Please return it back by pressing enter. Right. The ball will be returned in the direction you are facing. Great. Okay, I'll roll ten balls. Okay. So it's just me hitting enter to return all the awesome balls. Keep it up. I'll give some of the balls to you. Select a stage. Tutorial. Now, the balls will appear in our collection items list, but as far as I can tell, they're useless. They don't, uh, they don't do anything at all for you. Some collection items will help you, but some are useless. Select a level. Zero, zero, three. Let's be acrobatic. Well, let's learn jumping and attacking. You can dodge enemy attacks while jumping. Try avoiding skateboards coming from your right. Okay. So, there's a skateboard. I'm gonna press the up arrow to avoid that. So basically just jumping over... Oops. Just jumping over uh, skateboards here. So I did get hit. 99 slash 100. I am walking because I'm not sure if you need to go to the end of this level. I'm not? No, you don't. Okay, so I'm just going to turn around. Because these skateboards come from the right side of the level. So you just have to avoid a certain number of them. So, great, great. There we go. There is another way to avoid attacks. This is a 2D side scroller, which means that you can avoid every attack by getting out of its range. I'll create a tile above you at the location 105, 2. Jump onto it and avoid the skateboards. You can avoid them all by jumping, but you don't need to jump if you are on the tile that was created. Okay, so... Objects, total object, skateboard at 100... Total objects, 1 slash current position, 1890. And where did they see the... One, tile was? One... 169. Let's see. 100. Yeah. 163. Zero. Yeah. Trying to remember. Yeah. 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 194. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 92 so slash. Something. Yeah. was, but I think I can complete the level this way. One hundred four. One hundred thirty-nine. One hundred thirty-seven. Zero. Eighty-eight slash one hundred twenty-eight. One hundred twenty-five. One hundred twenty-three. Zero. One hundred sixteen. One. One hundred nine. Oh, there it is. Yeah. 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 So. Try and get up here. 102. Yeah, yeah. 103. 3. There we go. 104. 0. Oops. Yeah. 102. 0. Yeah, yeah. 
103, 0. 105, 0. 107, 0. 105, 0. 105, 0. 105, 0. 100. 105, 0. Good. Okay, proceed to the next room. Okay, so I had a little trouble 73 getting up there, but basically, um, what it was showing you is that you can avoid enemy attacks if you stand on the tile that was created because the enemies would be below you and so they can't hit you. Some can because they have vertical Destroy toy cars with a club. ranged attacks, but choose a weapon by pressing the W key. To use your weapon, press space bar. Okay. Weapons list, club, one, made of plastic, looks almost useless. Yeah, so the only weapon we have is a club. This is to destroy the cars in their tutorial. Other than that, um, this weapon after the tutorial will become pretty much absolutely useless because it'll do no damage against anything. No matter how high your attack is. So I'm using the space bar and hitting the Destroyed one. Another. Object in total object toy car at nine zero horse thirty three zero. These cars move faster than me, so well done. I would like to add one thing though. In this game, unlike other sod scrollers, you and other objects are not distinct. Enemy attacks can hit other enemies or objects, and your attacks can also hit most of the objects. Yeah. However, important key items may not be attackable. These are the basics, but I like exceptions. Have <laughs> have you'll understand why I'm saying this later on. Well, please listen to this situation. So, twenty-six two. We're standing at twenty-six two, and we can't get hit by anything. But what it's showing us is that that skateboard is hitting the car that is moving below us, and. As I explained, enemies can hit other enemies and destroy them. In this game, you gain experience when you defeat an enemy and level up. Like this. When leveled up, your HP slightly increases. You will also get some level up points. The amount of level up points you can get is based on your current level. Level up points can be assigned to your stats, and you can enhance your strength that way. Stats up. Okay. Press L while in any stage to open this screen. So this is the level up screen. Use your up and down arrows to select what stat you want to enhance. To us, the left arrow will decrease the number of assigned points. Once you have confirmed how many points to assign to each stat, choose Confirm at the bottom of the menu. Once you press Confirm, it isn't possible to undo the changes or modify them. Please bear this in mind and consider which stat changes are necessary. Yeah, so once you allocate with the Confirm key, you will not get those points back. Defense, Attack, Current Value 0. So, this is the level up screen. Um, we have various stats here, so Attack will increase your overall um, damage you do with weapons. Um, most weapons, that is, except for projectile weapons such as guns, um, stuff like that, because guns do not improve with your attack power as you might expect, um, and other projectile weapons like that. So, if I hit the right arrow here... You can increase the allocation for attack. Current value zero with this keystroke. Yeah. You, you can increase the allocation. You can, you can decrease the allocation for attack. Current value zero with this keystroke. But yeah, you cannot so reallocate I'm, the previously confirmed points. You can decrease... So, as I hit the you, you can, left arrow and you can right arrow, it tells you can, you us can that... 
Um, this is this isn't actually leveling up. This is just showing us the level of defense. Screen. Current value zero. Um, defense will decrease. Um, allocating defense will decrease the amount of damage we take from most things, except for projectiles, again, and other kinds of some other kinds of attack. attack. If attack current value zero. Tech is required to use some weapons and shields. Um, oh, by the way, uh, back to attack. Um, attack does have... Um, weapons do have s attack multipliers, so... Um, certain weapons have certain attack multipliers that they factor in. So as your attack increases, that attack multiplier will... Um, the damage will increase by that much however much the attack multiplier is. Um, tech is required to use some weapons. Um, a lot of weapons have tech requirements that you um, that they have before you can use them. If you try and use them, you won't be able to until you have the appropriate amount of tech. Um, some weapons also have tech multipliers in addition to attack multipliers that they factor in. So they'll get stronger with tech in addition to attack. Um, some also have stamina multipliers. Some have HP multipliers. Um, some have level multipliers. Um, some even have all of those. Stamina, current value 30. Um, stamina is required to um, use a lot of physical weapons, and so the less stamina you have, the slower you'll walk, and the slower you'll be able to um, use your weapon, um, because with each weapon swing you use a, a certain amount of stamina. Not all weapons have stamina requirements, but a lot do, um, especially the heavier ones. Usually the heavier the weapon, the more stamina it's going gonna, it's gonna to take. Um, HP, current value 20. And finally, HP. Confirm. And let's hit confirm. Okay, now, destroy a boss toy car. So HP will increase, um, I believe it increases by like five points with every allocation by one point. Um, so... Each time you allocate it, it allocates, I think, by five or something. Okay, you now, also okay, gain now, a certain destroy amount. a blast toy car. You also gain a certain amount when you level two. I think it's like ten or something. So let's yep. destroy this. Can proceed to the tutorial remix. Good. Select a stage. All right. Good. Select a zero, 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 004 tutorial remix. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Tutorial remix. Oh, before you start, I'll give you this. This is a compact sonar. It uses sounds to indicate walls or surfaces that are in front of or above you. This is useful. Press the O key to turn it on or off. If the sonar detects a wall, it makes a sound like this. And when it detects a surface above you, you'll hear the sound, but it does not necessarily mean that you can jump up to there. By using the sonar, you'll find exploring stages with complex terrain much easier. Yeah. So Panel. if I if I press O, sonar on. That's turning the sonar on and sonar off. Sonar off. Um, I'm gonna I'll leave it off for now. I don't think I really need it here. In more complicated stages, it's very useful. Yep. 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 
27, 27, 3, on, total on, toy car at 35, 0, horse, pop. Okay, so we need to get down. Yeah. Forty-five zero. There we go. see wall lifting up. Yeah. So now we can go through the yeah. door. Object in four at one hundred and ninety nine. And we have more escape. Ninety nine slash one hundred. This time we just need to run to the end of the level. Yeah. Uh, toy car at zero zero horse toy car at six zero horse toy car at thirteen zero toy car 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 Object, total objects, one slap, toy car at 86, zero, hold, nine, zero. So we have one more, way over at 86. Yeah, these move fast. And the club is very short range. So... There we go. Okay. Uh, total objects, 6 slash cup, switch at 30-30, toy car at 38-20, golden throwing knife at 60 clean river at 70 ducks at 80 finds clean water at 90. So, there's a switch here. Let's, uh, press it and see what happens. So it generated a skateboard, and that skateboard is a car. 
Object total on escape mode at toy car at golden throwing knife at 60 zero. No, there is 34, a 30. golden throwing knife, which I'm not sure we can get to yet. Um, that's a, I believe a, uh, tactical item which you can use by pressing X. Um, I'm not really going to worry about it right now because I don't want to spend my time trying to get down there. Objects golden throwing knife at 60 zero. 76, zero. So we are at zero, but we can't. 76, zero. We can't move past uh, 76 to the left, so it requires some platforming. Good job. Actually, I haven't explained everything, but you will eventually figure things out. By the way, how was the last area? Was it too easy for you? The tutorial has ended. The item warehouse has been unlocked. You can now start your journey. So the item warehouse is basically where you can store and retrieve items that you don't uh, you don't want to use, or that um, just to clean up your inventory. You can also do it with weapons. Select a stage. Tutorial. Okay. Stage 1. School of Insanity. And now we have stage 1 unlocked. So that is the tutorial. So, for now, I'm gonna... Data Brian. State item. Tact. Collect. Weapon. Shield. Manage. Preference. Exit. Saves the current. Are you sure you want to quit the game? No. Yes. Yes. LC Sigilla. I grip. Off Studio 2. Off Studio. Off Studio. Start virtual. Stop recording. Checkbox. Chat. And that's gonna do it for this part. Um... It went on a little longer than I wanted, but there was some things I needed to explain and stuff, so um, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to play the game, uh, the basics, and when we come back we will actually begin playing the real game. So I'll see you then. Stop recording. Yes.